All right, guys, welcome back. Uh, I've got you focused in here on the Pico. Um, it's funny, I just ordered, actually just received a new 30 amp clamp from these guys at AES Wave yesterday. And I uh, already don't even have the thing in my hands for 10 hours and we're already getting to test it out. So it's pretty cool. Seems to work very well. I'll try to get you guys focused in here a little bit. If you guys can see that, uh, let's see. We have a 444 milliamp draw uh, on this 2004 BMW M3. And uh, they've been trying to have this thing fixed and um, lucky for me, it ended up here because I love BMWs. Um, so what I'm gonna show you is I also have a meter hooked up in, uh, in here, okay? You guys can see that. This is reading about 400 milliamps, a little under. Uh, I have the leads backwards, excuse that, it doesn't matter. Um, I was just testing the accuracy of the meter against the scope here, and there's a little discrepancy. I mean, it could be me, it could be whatever, but it has a drain regardless. First thing I did with this thing was I went in and I looked with the thermal camera because the, the drain was actually higher. It was up around 650, 700 milliamps. And initially, when I saw this, I, um, I started looking around with a thermal camera and I found that the radio was uh, extremely warm. Now, uh, without jumping to any conclusions and you know calling a bad radio, I let the car sit for another half hour. Uh, after it sat, uh, the radio had powered down. The drain had dropped down to where you see it now. And um, then, what I did, which I'll show you, what I did was I got to my fuse block, one of my fuse blocks, this vehicle has three, uh, for those of you who are familiar with BMW, one of them is in here, I disconnected my light here so that there's no drain here, um, at this point, I'm sorry if this video is not the greatest, guys. I'm trying my best. This is kind of awkward to film uh, what, what I'm doing here. That's why I wasn't filming while I was testing. It's kind of difficult. Um, but got my favorite tool, my hand pound. Well, not really. One of my favorite tools. Uh, and this is where this thing shines. All right. And once again, we're going to show how this works. I want to cross my fuses. And yes, you can do this with a meter. I know you guys are going to chime in and say that. I like the amp pound. It does the conversions for you uh, internally. It is a dedicated tool for this sort of testing. So I prefer using this. It's quicker, okay? And we do a lot of this kind of work, so I do not, I do not like to waste time. Now, if you could hear that, I'm going to show this one more time, actually. Hang on. If I go across a fuse, you're gonna hear that slight tone, that beep. Okay, it's just gonna be steady. And you're gonna have no reading here uh, on the tool, okay? Nothing's gonna happen, it's just gonna be a steady beep. Okay, there's the tone. Hopefully you can pick it up with the mic. Um, when I go to the bad fuse, that's what I get. I get beep beep and it stops. Now I can set my fuse type, which is a, a mini, and my value which is a 30 amp on this, in this case, okay? I'm going to press both of these buttons at the same time. That's gonna lock that in. And there's your 4.41, there's your 400 milliamp draw that we have on this vehicle. Now, hang tight. Now guys, for those guys that don't do electrical work or are intimidated by electrical work, these cars will intimidate you dramatically, okay, just because of the way they're set up. There's a ton of stuff going on here. If you look up in here, there's one of your fuse boxes. Now, when you th when you, if you think about this, there could be any one of these circuits could be a problem, right? Now, just because there's all those fuses there, we've already isolated, and this did not take long. This was not like a long drawn out process here. It was quick to isolate the fuse, the circuit that has the issue. The long part is when you have to wait for the power in the vehicle, the, the vehicle to power down, okay? Now, we utilize different equipment. We use the impound, the scope, meter, uh, thermal imaging camera. All this stuff comes into play 
and they all have their place with this kind of stuff. Now, what I want to show you, if I can here quickly, is I pulled, knowing that that fuse is the problem, I found out which fuse it is on the card here. It's fuse 41, okay? And at that point, we went to our, wire, our power distribution wiring diagram. I'll mark this so you guys can see. This is fuse 41, uh, right here. Can't see too good, guys, I'm sorry. Right here. That is fuse 41. Now, just because uh, there's, say there's 40 fuses or 50 fuses in here, does not mean that every fuse is dedicated to one component. That's where you could get in trouble. Okay, if it says radio fuse, say, um, just because it says radio does not mean radio is the only thing on the circuit. That's something to be aware of, okay, in this kind of testing. Now, I'm going to try to, I'm trying to get you guys a clear picture of what I'm looking at here. I'm, I'm sorry if this is not the best quality video, but I'm trying my best. Let me see if I get some more light on here for you, too. Maybe that'll help. that help a little bit, guys? You can't hear me, or I can't hear you, actually, so doing our best. Um, okay, so now, what's the next step? This fuse is feeding all of this, all of these components. And if you can't read them, it's subwoofer if equipped, uh, hi-fi amplifier if equipped, CD changer, onboard, uh, onboard monitor control unit if equipped, navigation computer GPS receiver if equipped, and radio control unit. So this fuse happens to go to the radio, which I initially thought may be the problem, okay? <clears throat> it is not. Uh, it has powered down. So what do, you, what do you do here? You start ripping the car apart, right? Well, what I did was... The, the simplest thing first, okay? I know what's on the circuit, so what is out in the open that I can get to, right? Let's go see. Okay, so I'm gonna cut to the chase here, okay, and I'm gonna show you right off. I want you to look. See that? Picking that up. Hopefully the camera's picking that up. Those are stains. That's water. Find the water, Keith. Right? Working on a European car, you have a problem, and you have all kinds of crazy problems, which this thing does have. Uh, find the water. So where are we? How does that look? Isn't that pretty? Navigation. Look at this. You see the stains on it? This is actually our drain. Okay, and I'm going to see if I can show you. I don't know if this is going to come up or not, but I'm going to try to show you with the uh, thermal camera. See if I can get it to uh, focus in here for you guys and uh, see what happens. All right. There is our thermal camera. And if you notice, you can see the heat signature coming out of the vents here. You can see the heat signature on the on the unit. Okay, this thing is uh, is powered right, up. So I, actually, what I wanted to do, guys, is I want to have the meter here so you can see it. Okay. Thanks. And uh, that way, that's in the view. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come here and I'm going to unplug this uh, this module. And there is your uh, parasitic draw, which is gone, okay? Also, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring you over to show you the Pico. And there is your, sorry about that. Okay, so as you can see, I'll stop it actually. If you could see that, um, my dream was at 444 milliamps on the scope, and I have that line, I have that cursor in showing it, okay? Uh, I'm going to drop the cursor down now to where the, where the uh, amperage, the milliamps uh, are currently at, and if you, 75 milliamps, okay? So, 
that is uh, roughly that is reading a little higher. Like I said, that might be me. This is the first time I'm using this clamp. I never played with it. That's why I have the meter as a backup. But 40 milliamps on the meter, 100% confident in the fluke. I've never had a uh, failed, you know, reading here or anything. This is correct. So um, I just have my cursor probably off a little bit here, and I need to play around a little bit with this. Okay, so that's it. That that proves it. Um, either way, it doesn't really matter. Like I said, either one that you like to use, you are in spec. And uh, this is this is the unit that's faulty, obviously because it has water damage. So, what do you do? Uh, it's a convertible, and it's a uh, European car, so it is going to have leaks. And I don't know which seal here is bad. I don't care. I really don't. I'm not going to fix it. So that's it. Uh, nothing else to really do uh, with this car. I'm going to give him a call, see what he wants to do, and he's going to have to decide here um, you know that's as far as I'm going with it uh, that's the he wanted to know where the problem was and uh, well it's a BMW that's the start of the problem water is the uh, main cause of the issue and uh, he's gonna have to have the leak fixed before putting a module in here obviously so that's that he's got to go to a uh, body shop Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed it. I uh, just wanted to bring you through the thought process on how to uh, go through a parasitic draw. Don't be intimidated by the car just because it's a BMW or a Mercedes or a freaking Ferrari or whatever it is. If you have diagrams that are, uh, are worth a, you know anything, they're any good, and you have some knowledge, take your time and approach it like any other vehicle. Uh, you'll find the problem and you'll fix it, okay? Questions, comments down in the bottom. Appreciate all the support, guys, and I have something... Uh, if we get up to 4,000 subscribers, I'm going to do a giveaway for you guys, um, show my appreciation, and uh, hope you guys like what I have to offer. I'll see you soon.